Hello nerd, Warhammer 40,000 has existed for decades. Many people who are new to the hobby don't really understand how ancient this universe is compared to the other stuff that is coming out. Since such a long time has passed, it is not uncommon for the creators of this universe to get rid of some things and add few others on top, or just change things completely in the name of continuity. The list of retcons that Warhammer 40,000 universe has is massive and I doubt it is even possible to dig up all of them, but what we will do in this video is that I will list out the things that, at least for me, seem to be the most interesting and bizarre changes that have happened over the years. So make sure you are subscribed, join the discord and without further ado, let's dig in. There is only war. You know, some of these changes are wild and just show you a completely different side of Warhammer that could have been, yet is just a memory. And one of the first things I want to start out with is the Black Rage. We know that in the current lore, Black Rage is something that Blood Angels Astartes and their successors suffer from due to the psychic backlash of their Primarch's death, making those Astartes who succumb to it to live out the last moments of Sanguinius when he was fighting Horus at the culmination of Horus Heresy. These Astartes become fearless juggernauts, filled with rage and unable to feel any type of pain. They become killer animals stuck in a perpetual moment of their Primarch's last confrontation. We know that this disease, if you can even call it that, is the aftermath of Sanguinius' death, but in the old lore it is quite a bit different. You see, back then the Black Rage existed because Blood Angels decided to harvest the gene seed from the corpse of Sanguinius. This gene seed was contaminated by the last moments of Sanguinius' life, so it was corrupted with the Black Rage and those Astartes that got this gene seed implanted succumbed to the Black Rage. This would actually make even a bit more sense than making it just a pure psychic backlash. Now, if you thought that this is weird, just wait, we are getting only started. Let's talk about Lehman Russ for a brief moment. He wasn't always a primer. Well, not at least in the old lore, because in the old lore there weren't really space marine legions and primers, just chapters and chapter masters, if you can even call them that, because the opinions are mixed due to some sources stating that Primarch was a synonymous with the name chapter master. Back then, Lehman Russ was a chapter master of the fourth founding chapter, Space Wolves, and he had to be fitted with a cybernetic breathing apparatus after his lungs were damaged by acid. And here's the most bizarre thing, he is the one who wrote the Codex Astartes. Of course, we know what the lore is now, so the changes are just massive. I actually think, due to his previous description, it could be a possibility that he was partially used as an inspiration for creation of Martarian. Or maybe I could be wrong, but still, it is quite interesting. Now let's talk about Tangron. His old lore is more of a game of silent telephones, but I remember since the day that I was first introduced to the Warhammer, his lore has been altered quite a bit. Back in the days, he wasn't this bloodthirsty Primarch with butcher's nails in his skull. He actually was the first chapter master to side with Horus in the heresy. And basically, Angro knew Horus as a brother and supported the Warmaster in demanding a new order of discipline and martial virtue as the only way to save mankind from destruction. The World Eaters had always been the most warlike and savage of the Space Marine chapters. Not legions, but chapters and Angron led them into the worship of Khorne, God of War and Bloodshed. Angron is documented to be fiercely loyal to the Emperor, and only with time he changed his opinion, because Khorne appealed to his honor and martial pride more. He is said to be twisted and horribly mutated over the centuries, becoming a hulking giant with skin color of spilt blood. And that is not the only thing that is different, but also that he is explicitly mentioned as a cunning and extremely able leader, and whenever forces are entrusted to him, their tactical value doubles due to his sheer leadership capabilities, so essentially that is really something different from the raging demon prince he is today. Now here's another thing, even when we are talking about Fulgrim, something seems a bit off, like his story doesn't really match the perfectionist he was supposed to be, and I think the old lord explains it quite well. You see, Fulgrim actually wanted to arrest Horus on Istvan, but he fell to Chaos because Slanesh directly seduced him to join Chaos's side, so instead of a demon blade speaking to Fulgrim and being corrupted for a long time, he actually was righteous and wanted to arrest Horus, and overall, his corruption followed later in the story. And you know the whole thing about Primarchs, well, Primarchs weren't really Primarchs in the sense how we understand them now, they actually just used to be Space Marines with the title of Primarchs, and that's about it. But 
All these things got changed around so much that, in the end, it's really hard to dig up the whole truth unless you have every single Warhammer book and magazine. Horus, for example, is mentioned as the Emperor's most trusted lieutenant who got possessed by a demon. There was no such thing as the Great Crusade, and the Imperium was established only after Horus was put down. And it wasn't even called Horus Heresy back then, but Horus's Rebellion. The Emperor was indeed bound to the Golden Throne, but only because of old age. And the throne functioned as a life support device. Even more so, the Emperor kept giving instructions to his followers from the Golden Throne. And the actual lineup of the first legions, well, not even legions, but the chapters, can be found in the Rogue Trader from the year 1986. And those were Dark Angels, Blood Angels, Space Wolves, Ultramarines, White Scars, Iron Hands, Blood Drinkers, Crimson Fist, Flesh Eaters, Flesh Terrors, Rainbow Warriors, and Silver Skulls. Let's just put it this way. Those who are familiar with the lore know how significantly things have changed. Now let's talk about Xenos a bit more. For example, Necrons really didn't have any backstory up until 4th or 5th edition, and in 2nd and 3rd edition they had only like 5 models basically resembling Terminator from the movies. Even Tau had richer lore than them, and in actuality Tau was one of the first races in the Warhammer 40,000. The precursors to the Necrons were the Chaos Androids, and they were a creation of Chaos Squats, basically a robot with a demon bound inside of it, so a demon engine. Lord of the Orcs has also been changed massively. At the start, it was implied that the little shit snotlings were the ones that created Orcs and Gretchens as their slave race. Snotlings were the ones called Brain Boys. Even funnier than that, for them to keep their intelligence, they were eating some type of a fungi, otherwise they wouldn't be smarter than squigs. In the end, Orcs rebelled, killed all of the snotlings, and ate all of the shrooms to the point where these fungi went extinct. The problem was that even though they ate them, these fungi weren't compatible with the orc physiology and thus didn't make them smarter. And that is why orcs are like this currently. Well, that would be true if the old lore wasn't retconned. Also orc youths, this is basically an older term for orc teenagers upon reaching certain age. Contrary to human teenagers that go through rebellious phase, orc youths seek out discipline and order, creating finely tuned and organized military units with members wearing Polish boots and neat uniforms, and performing firing drills when out of combat. They ultimately grow out of it. The old lore is just… something different. Also, Tyranids have experienced massive changes over the years. Now we know them as this bioweapon-like species that just consume everything and constantly evolves itself so that it can consume everything more effectively. That is basically the core of this species. But back in the days, they weren't anywhere close to that. Tyranids used to be slavers that enslaved multitude of other species. They weren't described as this all-consuming entity, but rather an evil functional faction consisting of multitude of species. One of those species were Zotes. Few of you are familiar with them, and even till this day, they have in a sense made a return in the lore, although their purpose has changed. The Warhammer universe has changed a lot, and many people are not even aware of it, but at least now, I hope I gave you a glimpse of the things that used to be. So, which one is your favorite retcon? Share the funky information you have with everyone in the comments below. Remember to join the Discord server, and if you enjoy my video, then leave a like and subscribe to my channel with the notifications on so you wouldn't miss my latest upload. And if you really want to support me, then consider becoming a member for just $1 by clicking on the join button right below the video title or visit my Patreon. Link is in the video description. By doing so, you will gain access to members only polls to watch an upcoming video topics, and you will get a pretty cool badge added to your name whenever you make a comment so you can even flex a bit. Also, You'll be featured as a supporter on my main channel page and every chapter master in all my video descriptions. With that in mind, I'll see you next time. Nerd!